sweet friend. Welcome to another show, another episode of Watercolor Happy Hour. Uh, my name is Volta. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. And this is my husband, Dan. <laughs> uh, he will be creating a cocktail tonight and I will be showing you guys how to paint it. So we will be doing, I'm really excited about this one. This is a cat. This cocktail mm -hmm. is called a cactus. Cact <laughs> cactus flower. Cactus flower cocktail. Uh, you can see a picture of it right here, which I'm like pointing to Dan's head, but it's over here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited because I never have never tried um, to eat a cactus before, and this is uh, surprisingly was such a just delicious result. So Dan, why don't you talk about um, the inspiration behind the cocktail and all the things? Yeah, yeah. Well, so first, the cocktail we're gonna make looks nothing like what Volta painted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Volta, Volta wanted to make a purple cocktail, and she made one. Uh, the cocktail itself also won't look anything like what uh, the source material looks like, which is this beautiful purple magenta type of color that comes from a properly ripe cacti pr prickly pear Here. cactus mm -hmm. fruit. Unfortunately, those don't really exist in Dallas. I guess everybody grabs them right away, yeah, and it's a little early in the season. Yeah. Even if they're not completely ripe, they still taste good. They just look a little, you know, muddy. I don't know the right word for it. Well, the color is just different. It's not going to be a purple, yeah. uh, pink color, magenta color to them. It's more of an orange, yeah. right? The color is still delicious. It just yeah. looks, yeah. It just doesn't look as vibrant as yeah. I painted it. Yeah. Yeah. And you end up, so we still did what we usually do with this stuff because we cannot keep fruit to save our life. Uh, we made the usual syrup. So we took uh, equal parts, fruit, sugar, water, brought it up to a boil, let that cool, strained it into a jar, boom, we have uh, prickly pear cactus syrup. Nice. This is a really fun cocktail, by the way. It has a bunch of cool colors. So prickly pear is cool, also has watermelon in it, and kind of my new obsession, as we talked about before, mezcal. I love that sweet and smokiness that comes together. Mm -hmm. uh, this one combines a lot of cool flavors, as well as to add some spice, we're gonna use ginger. I've talked about this before as well. I don't like to mess with a lot of ginger. It tends to dry out. It's kind of hit or miss when I'm gonna use it. So some days I use a ton, some weeks I use a ton, sometimes I don't use it at all. You can get crushed ginger in little serving size portions, one teaspoon per cube that goes in your freezer. You pull it out whenever you want it. Super Works great convenient. for cocktails, yeah. very convenient, super easy. Yeah, barely any inconvenience. Barely any inconvenience, <laughs> exactly. So what we're going to do, instead of going through the whole recipe, which, by the way, before I forget, uh, found it on the Moody Mixologist. Yes, yeah, so they took that gorgeous photo that Dan yeah, showed you guys. They took the photo. I it was, looks beautiful. I was inspired by the color scheme of like magenta and the green lime, so that's yeah. why my painting up there <laughs> looks uh, kind of similar to that, but just that I wanted to do a different size, different shape of a glass because I've been... Just kind of yeah. getting, getting tired of painting the same glasses, you know, over and over again. Moody, MoodyMixologist.com. It's a really great name. Couldn't find, couldn't find her actual name. I'm fairly certain it's a lady because she said that she's holding off on drinking this until she's no longer pregnant oh. in the blog post. Probably. Pretty sure it's yeah. a lady. Yes. Lovely photos. Great recipe. Thank you, Moody Mixologist. <laughs> uh, we are going to mix it up a little bit. I don't like macerating fruit in liquor and straining it, mostly because I'm lazy, also because I forget about it. So what we're going to do is just take a little watermelon, dump it into our shaker, pour our two ounces of mezcal <laughs> on top of this. 
Yes, that is a cute top that Volta has on. I complimented it as well. Oh, thanks. Thank you, LinkedIn user. I think that's Tiffany. <laughs> thank you, Tiffany, LinkedIn user. And if it's not Tiffany, then thank you otherwise. Still thank you. Yeah. Oh, uh, by the way, I was looking this up, and yeah, Hoven, like you said, yeah. young. Yeah. So that's the unaged okay. mezcal. Yeah. Uh, don't know where this actually is from. No. Is that Espadine? Where's that? Espadine. What's that mean? Is that a region? I probably, I'm not familiar with that. I think that's where it's from. I think, oh, nope, it's Oaxaca. Oaxaca? Oaxaca. Okay. I almost had it. <laughs> yeah. I got most of those Close letters of right. <laughs> yeah. Close enough. Yeah. Dan loves this stuff. If you can't tell. What I do. The, the mezcal. Ah. As I make a mess, I may mean, have to add a little more to it. But more watermelon? No, more uh, mezcal, because I just oh, spilled some. Yeah, you did. I got excited. <laughs> Overly aggressive muddling. Uh, but yeah, just in short, what I did there was just cut some watermelon, throw it into my shaker, poured the liquor over it, and then I'm muddling it in order to get kind of a, an approximation of letting it sit for a while. Most of the flavor in watermelon is water soluble alcohol liquor is 60% water it's going to dissolve very quickly we're not talking something that needs to sit for a long time it makes makes no sense to let something sit all day there's not like flavors that are going to develop anyway in my own personal opinion just shake it up all right so now that we've smashed that up with a bunch of watermelon. We are going to add some lime juice. Oh, actually, before I forget, I got excited. We need ginger. Yeah. I don't think we've used, have we used ginger before in a cocktail? I don't remember the last time we did. It, it's it exciting does. because it adds like just a little bit yeah. of like. Ginger, a little sizzle. Yeah, a little sizzle. A little spark. I know we made a cocktail with ginger before. Uh, it was like something lemon and ginger. Yeah. Lemon, lemon bees. Bees, bees knees. knees. Bees knees. Oh, no, oh, no. Penicillin. Uh, penicillin. Yeah. Penicillin. Penicillin used candy ginger. Candy we ginger, used a, uh, yeah. We made a ginger syrup yeah. with it as well. So I'm excited about this one because it is... Proper ginger. Like proper ginger. Yes. Oh, that smells so good. Mm, it smells amazing. Let's see what people are saying. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> Dan, Cheers, Dane had to um, uh, look up macerating. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dane. <laughs> yes, macerating is just soaking. Wait, macerating is just soaking? Well, it's not. It's, sound, it, it's not it's like, 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 like absorbing. Crushing? No. It's, okay. You're thinking of like masticate. Masticate, it's yeah. It's chewing. Yeah, okay. I clearly, Dane, I clearly also need to look up the meaning of the word. Is it? Uh, not know. So I could feel that this this lime was kind of dry. We're, if you need to measure it, it's about a uh, it's about three quarters of an ounce. I, I again, I always put these low, but in this one, because there's a lot of sweetness coming from the syrup that we made and from the watermelon and we want something to balance out the flavor of the mezcal, you can go a little heavy on it. Also, I'm making a larger portion of it. If you can't tell, we have a big glass, so <laughs> I want to fill it up. It'll look pretty, don't worry. Yeah, gotta look pretty. Yeah, that's what's more important. Not my liver. <laughs> the beauty of the glass. There we go. I'm gonna use a uh, cactus as a decoration. In that okay, line. that's fine. Since it looks nothing like what you painted anyway. It definitely doesn't. I might as well. Yeah. Just go nuts. I kind of went rogue with my painting this <laughs> time. Or I didn't make it fast enough for you to <laughs> be able to have the reference photo. Yeah. That's One what way. happens when I paint before you actually make the cocktail. I just yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we're gonna use about uh, about an ounce of the syrup, which. Yes, that's a lot, but... Oh, let me smell it. Ah, uh, it smells so nice. Like a floral type of... Mm -hmm. mm. Sweet, cactus-y. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, there's this, this nice, like, sweet slash... 
tangy vegetalness. Mm. It's it's one of those things that's hard to describe without yeah. actually smelling it. Like, what's an orange taste like? An orange. Yeah. All right, we have a we have our ice in here. I'm just gonna pour off because it's been there a while. Don't want it to get too watered down. Oh, uh, Dane would like to see the end of the muddling device. There you go. This was something that we got at a restaurant supply store. Yeah. It has a, a little bit of texture in it. That's why you see me when I'm mm. muddling. You'll see this like rotating movement that helps me, uh, that helps kind of break up whatever's at the bottom. Adds a little bit of extra friction to whatever it is that we're muddling. Very useful. Yeah. So we're going to shake this really, really well so we incorporate the watermelon into our mezcal and get the syrup all dissolved and the ginger just, you know, everybody's playing nice. Ah. All right. And we want to, uh, we want to actually, uh, you know, dilute it somewhat as well. Because those are strong flavors. Yes, exactly. Just like watercolors. Oh, can you grab yeah. the small strainer from over there? I forgot about it. I can see a few seeds floating around. Yeah, so we definitely wanna, don't want seeds in there. Yeah, we want to do what's called double strain. Oh, and the, the seeds are from the... Seeds right? are from seeds are from the seed, seedless watermelon. Seedless watermelon. Yeah, even though it's seedless, there's yeah. still some white seeds in there. How about that? So it may not be a magenta-looking cocktail, but it still looks pretty. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, that it, these were not ripe prickly pear cactus fruits. Uh, this power is insufficient for me. Oh, that's, the power is insufficient for the monitor. Don't worry about it. Okay. Worst case scenario, we'll have to plug it in. They'll still be able to see us. We just won't be able to see them. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, if the monitor might, might lose the connection. Lose the connection to what? To, to, the, to the stream. Why would the stream yard cause us to lose the connection I mean, to? I know. No, the monitor. We would we wouldn't be able to see all our sweet all the sweet friends comments. Okay. That's the only negative. But it should be okay soon enough. Unless it was insufficient power to the camera. Ah, technology. The joys of streaming. Okay. Hopefully it'll be okay. I'll keep an eye on it while we paint. And then last is right. going to be our decoration. You just saw me take a slice of this. So we are going to... Nah, that one was bad. So we want to take us a nice chunk of our prickly pear and put it on the edge. So definitely strain the prickly pear. There's a lot of seeds in it. A lot of seeds in there. And then you end up with a... Cactus flower cocktail. Oh, look at that. Still a pretty color. Yeah. Cheers. No, I didn't add, uh, Dane, no, I didn't add anything to the rim this time. You absolutely could put some smoked salt. Uh, we've just got a cool stuff that we've been playing around with, actually. It's good that you bring that up. We're probably going to rim uh, a glass with, what is it called? P. Piloncillo. Piloncillo. Mm -hmm. Piloncillo. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Uh, yeah, this is a, a, a Mexican packed brown sugar that you can get at the grocery store, mm. and it is delicious. Uh, it's kind of a cross between sugar and it maple doesn't need sugar. That. It, doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't. But we're going to use this <laughs> as a rim. If you like watermelon, I feel like this is very kind of watermelon forward cocktail. Yeah. But it's so it's. But, but it's not, it's not, there's like a certain complexity along with the, the prickly pear cactus mm. syrup in it. It's just That's very so refreshing, That's so delicious. dangerous. Dangerous, mm. yeah. Maybe should have made a smaller amount. <laughs> we had to fill up the glass, dear. We did, yeah. We can, we can split it if you don't drink it all by the time you finish mm. painting. <laughs> if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one is all for you. I'll switch the feeds. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you, LinkedIn user. They said it was gorgeous. Oh, uh, it's probably Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany, LinkedIn user. 
So now let's transition over to Volta. All right. Nice setup. Uh, so Dan, do you want to paint with us? No, you know, we're rooting for watermelon. Okay, I got you, um, you know, your special cup of water ah. and watercolor brush because you were complaining about the Pentel brush pans last time. Let's see how good I am now with a proper brush. Yeah, here you go. Here's some paper. Oh, oh you already have some paper. Okay, never mind. You already gave me some paper. Then use that paper then. <laughs> oh, let me turn around. Oh, yeah, can you turn around the screen so we can see? All right, as you can see, this uh, painting looks nothing like what uh, we did. <laughs> uh, Dane said, quick paint it before Dan drinks it all. Yeah. Um, this is going to be slightly Anyways. different. This is truly like an artist's Ooh, interpretation. I have my own sheets too and everything? Uh, you can. I will be using this palette though. Oh, I'll steal your palette. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, because I have special colors in here that aren't in that palette. <laughs> And by special colors, I mean magenta. I really wanted to use magenta. <laughs> um, and I saw I saw this shape glass um, and like through doing my like Google image search, and I, I thought it looked very unique and fun. And it was like, why not? Why not just paint this type of glass? Um, and if you take a look, it kind of looks like uh, almost like a triangle shape. So like just breaking it down into simple shapes. So you got two lines that are that are almost like trying to form a triangle but they're not going to come to a point there's going to be like a little curved line at the bottom kind of like this and then at the top we're going to have another curved line that connects these two lines so another curved line and then also we'll we'll sketch a line that's like a mirror image of this one so or or you can kind of think of it we're sketching a narrow narrow little oval shape here i'm making a big old glass yeah big old glass um <laughs> so now uh we will uh do the base and that's just going to be another smaller oval shape Kind of going off the sides here. Another, t t you know, more of a narrow kind of oval shape. So we got our base and then let's see. Uh, oh, let's add a couple of um, ice cubes. So those are just gonna be like a series of square-like shapes. One of them is gonna be um, kind of peeking out of the glass and then there's going to be a couple more here and then finally we will add a lime slice and that's just going to be another kind of like semicircle shape inside of the glass so if you're trying to kind of sketch a half a circle and then straight line that connects to get our nice little little lime wedge and then another smaller kind of curve inside here all right uh, i don't think i brought my eraser yeah i'm back here still trying to get the base oh. in a proper circle well, you, you can go and dig for your, for your eraser. eraser. It's downstairs. Do you, you have a good go eraser on your pencil by chance? It's okay. Here, use my pencil. Oh, MVP. But don't lose it, Dan. You know, I, I, I understand you're saying that in jest, but I will probably find a way to lose a pencil in a matter of four feet. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you not to lose it because it's an important pencil. I use that pencil for all my client work, so I need it. <laughs> important stuff. All right, so I have my sketch done. Are you pretty much getting there? Yeah, sure. You can go ahead if you want yeah? to. Yeah, okay. 
I'm just right. making ice cubes. Yeah, all right. So uh, for the colors, I am using um, a premix color here. It's uh, it's called magenta. It's like the like very cool kind of pink color. What you see in the in the painting here. Um, but the way I'm gonna paint it is I'm gonna add a layer of water first. So um, I'm basically using the wet on wet technique. So I'm, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit of water on my brush pen and I am gonna paint around the ice cubes for now. Cause I just wanna cover the area like that's representing the drink. It's it's not my patented technique, Dan. It's a traditional signature, watercolor. <laughs> signature technique, multiple lotion. All right. Um, so I'm gonna grab some of magenta from my palette. Let me see. And then I'm just gonna grab and kind of drop in some. Just a, a little bit of color, you'll notice that it's starting to immediately like spread into this area where I added water first. So around the ice cubes. I really like to use this technique for cocktails, especially because it creates that like really flowy type of you know watercolory look. So we're even though we're having a little bit less control here, because it's kind of, you know, water is flowing and doing its thing. So now I'm just, with a clean brush, I'm coming in and kind of softening the edges of these ice cubes. So the water is kind of like getting in there, but I'm, I'm, I'm picking it off with my brush so that I can still have like a visible, nice visible um, ice cube in there. Let's see, but I do want to add a little bit more color because right now it's, very, very light. Let's see. You'll notice that sometimes like your, the highlights that essentially like we're lifting off some color from here and you know, that could disappear depending on how much water you have laid down. But you can always go back in and like reinforce um, some of those areas where you want, you know, your highlights to really happen or like the, the brighter spots, the ice cubes. All right. Might add even a little bit more, why not? So you can kind of, uh, you know, see how your sketch is turning out to be and you can always do another layer. Uh, but you uh, might want to let it dry a little bit. So I am gonna I'm gonna stop working in this area for now, and I'm just going to kind of let it let it dry first. All right, all right. So uh, while this area is drying, I'm going to uh, work on the little lime lime slice. So I've got some color here. I'm gonna use. A little bit of green and I'm gonna mix it in with some yellow just so I can get that nice kind of lime color. Alright, so I'm just painting this whole area. And you'll notice I, I left a little bit of a space here in between because I want to represent, um, I, I want the lime to look like it's inside of the glass. So that's why there's like just a little bit of a break uh, in my painting. And then I'm gonna grab a darker green to do the, uh, the wedge, the, not the wedge, the rind. rind. The rind. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, and then again, I will let this area dry too before I proceed 
to adding any of the details because otherwise they will just like completely merge into the previous layer. And I will next um, just work on the outline of the glass itself. Uh, I am using kind of like a really light uh, blue in my palette. It's a cerulean blue, uh, but any blue will work or even like a Payne's gray or if you just want to dilute a little bit of like uh, black with a ton of water, um, you'll have like a really light value and you could use that to, to paint the outline of the glass. I'm just uh, using blue now just to kind of like switch it up as far as uh, just the colors that I'm using. Because we're simply like giving the impression that, you know, there's, uh, this is a glass and there's a, a couple of little shadows here and there. And then there's a, uh, this rim at the top. Right, and then actually for this ice cube that's uh, peeking out, I am going to use a little bit of this magenta uh, to kind of outline the ice cube. But then I'm going to clean off the brush and, and soften this so that it looks like as if, you know, this ice cube is uh, picking up some of the color or like the reflection uh, of the beverage that's inside of the glass. Right, and then so for at this moment in time, like this area inside of the glass has uh, dried more or less. Like for the most part, it is dry. Uh, I am gonna add another layer of color just because I want it to be really uh, vibrant and uh, happy looking. So uh, depending on you know how much color you use the first time, um, usually the, kind of the rule of thumb is watercolor will dry a layer lighter than what you see uh, but you know depending on what your preference is you could you could just do one one layer or you could do several layers totally up to you typically the more layers you add um, it, it does depend on you know the subject matter but I would say um, a lot of adding a ton of layers usually helps with making um, a painting look more realistic because you're getting in like getting tons of shadows and like um, you know darker and brighter spots so uh, just really helps with that having uh, lots of layers to work with all right let's see oh thank you so much Patricia <laughs> uh, Dane thank you uh, let's see, to make magenta, would you mix red and purple? To make magenta, yeah, and maybe add even a touch of blue because magenta is really kind of, um, you know, if you think about like a cooler pink or a red that's got a little bit of coolness to it, so definitely like a little bit of purple. Maybe try some blue to kind of um, play around with the different mixes to see um, you should be able to get like something kind of similar to a magenta. I uh, I like to buy this one already pre-mixed uh, because I love this color so much and I don't want to, um, you know, worry about having to get the just the right color mixed every time I use it because I use it so often. <laughs> um, so with certain colors, you know, I'd, I'd definitely recommend buying a tube if you really, really love that color. Um, but otherwise, you know, it just might take a little bit of extra time to um, get that perfect mix. Alright, so you can see I have, I still have my little highlights here and I can always go in and lift off if I want these ice cubes to be even more pronounced. I'm really curious to see how Dan's um, painting is going to turn out because mm -hmm. He's not using my brush pens. He's using a regular watercolor brush. <laughs> um, all right, so before we finish off uh, the slime, I wanna add a couple of details in here. Um, so I'm just going back to this kind of green mix, have green and a little bit of yellow. And I'm just gonna use that to add a little bit, like 
some details so the little slices that are inside of the lime wedge and then also um, tiny little like dots or or brush marks to represent the pulp inside of the the lime slice and since this is also dry I want to I want this rind to look a little bit more lively so I'm gonna just add paint paint over another layer so if I add it a little bit too much I can always like lift off but I'm basically like lifting off just a little bit on the side here so it has a tiny bit of a highlight so because our, our um, light source is coming from this direction so it's just a nice little detail to add to make your um, painting be a little bit more dimensional and then the last part my favorite is adding a cast shadow mm -hmm. which like really kind of anchors um, and gives you know even more dimension to our sketch so I'm using Payne's gray it's super diluted um, and then I'm just painting right underneath the glass like a thin line and then off to the side just a little bit then I'm going to clean off the brush pen and I'm going to soften soften this this is a super easy way to add just a little bit of uh, more realism you know even if we are just kind of we're not necessarily trying to go for um, realistic painting but we are representing an object and adding just a bit of like some shadows and highlights really makes make something simple look a lot um, more dimensional and just just nicer like pops off the page just a little pop cut. yeah just a little pop not much just a little all right so i think we're pretty much done dan i want to see uh your painting curious to see how it turned out well i'm, I'm nowhere close to as fast as you are on these things <laughs> but i will say I, I did like having much more control over oh. the amount of water that i was able to put on okay I do agree, you have used a lot more watercolor yeah. to water ratio, so it looks a lot more vibrant. Yeah, I, re I really think that, that the brush pens, I cannot help but yeah. squeeze when I'm using yeah. them. So I end up using a lot more water. Yeah, understandable. And I'm sorry I didn't catch that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was just making you paint with pencil brush pens. Um, I mean, they are fun for some people, so clearly you are not a fan, and that's okay. You can use regular yeah. watercolor Every, brushes. Everybody has their own techniques, Exactly. you have to experiment to yeah. discover them. Exactly. Yeah, it's all part of the process of discovering. Uh, may, I, may I just uh, suggest mm -hmm. one, uh, uh, some notes? <laughs> sure. Uh, you could soften, soften this edge a little bit, so because right now it looks pretty dark and like very pronounced. Uh, but you could, all, uh, like with a clean, you know, not brush pen, <laughs> um, come right underneath and kind of like, almost like tickle the paper and you could soften that so tickle. it looks um, looks more natural, like more like watercolory, more softer. Right, but but also, but also I do want to point out that that's not necessary, only <laughs> if you'd like. No. Uh, because you could have some, you know, that could be just your style that, you know, if you like it this way, then that's cool too. No, I, still I, have I have no idea how you can how you can paint that quickly. <laughs> That's just crazy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, look, uh, Dane likes your painting too. Thanks, Dane. <laughs> used to have one fan. Uh, all right. Are we gonna? Should we switch yeah, to the other we view? Can go back. Yeah, let me. Switch, switch transition to 
us, and here you I'm go, really, dear. I'm holding up the screen. I will fix it. But you can't it. see the... <laughs> there, now you can see the comments. There we go, yes. Oh, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for tuning in tonight. I hope um, you give this cocktail a try. It's so delicious. It's uh, The smell is amazing. It's like that smokiness, right, from the yeah. skull, like, works so well uh, with the... The cactus and the watermelon, it's like really delicious. Just make sure that uh, if you are going to start messing around with mezcal, go to the bar and mm -hmm. maybe if you can find a place like, uh, I know El, El Rincon mm -hmm. down the street from us, uh, a lot of the more boutique uh, Latin American restaurants will do uh, mezcal flights so you can try a few different ones because uh, it is they they all have very distinct flavors. Uh, Illegal has a, a more sweeter, smoky flavor. So look at it like some of the lighter uh, Iowa scotches, like an Ardbeg, mm -hmm. like, like a light Ardbeg. Uh, whereas others have barely any smoke, and others are like right in your face smoke, mm -hmm. like I don't know the stronger versions <laughs> of Ardbeg. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, 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 I like scotches too. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> so basically, try them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Play around. Don't go out and buy it, buy a bottle because uh, before you try it, because they can be, they start at like thirty dollars mm. and only go up from there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so uh, Dane was asking for the source of the cocktail recipe. Did you modify the one we? mentioned? Uh, same ingredients, just kind of mixed around a bit. That was Moody Mixologist, moodymixologist.com, M-O-O-D-Y. And I'll make sure to post underneath uh, this live stream in a comment. I'll, I'll share the recipe of the cocktail. I mean, yeah. I keep meaning to do that beforehand, but I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so I will absolutely share it with you um, so that you have it, so you can try it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, same ingredients, just uh, I instead of doing all the maceration uh, and then uh, I think she bought a syrup for the prickly pear stuff. Ah, yeah, you made your own. Made the syrup mm -hmm. and just did the muddling with the watermelon because yeah. it absorbs so quickly. But we'll definitely share the recipe because like I know syrup sounds like, for example, for someone like me, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, how do I make a syrup? So if you have the right, like the proportions that we can share that, yeah. that'd be helpful. A scale is helpful. Yeah, scale. But generally, yeah, simple syrup is equal parts sugar and water. So lower the sugar a little bit, add in a bunch of fruit, mm -hmm. you'll be good. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone so much for joining. Uh, thank you so much, Dane. Yes, you can absolutely impress other people. <laughs> um, we, we're, I'm so excited about next. Ep oh my gosh, next episode. I like wish we could just do it right now because it's. It's, I'm not going to spoil it. It's going to be a surprise. I let's know, not, let's not. as well so give, give the okay, people just, on there a teaser. I'll just, I'll just show this and then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no okay, it was a pepper, um, but what kind of pepper we'll, we'll have, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> you understand only people in Texas are going to be excited about that or even recognize what it is. Okay. Well, I'm really excited. Okay. She's excited. I'll let I'll let Volta I'll let Volta be have, Let me have my moment. Yes. <laughs> um, so next next week will be um, same time, same place, uh, 7 p.m. Central. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Cheers, sweet friends. Cheers. Uh, do you want to end the broadcast? I will end the broadcast. <laughs> I can do it now. One click. Boom. End the broadcast.